Okay friends, it's Tuesday the 10th of November 2020 and I have a confession. And the confession is regarding my table for the garden. So some of the folks that watch Instagram and Facebook little notification will know about this. But I thought I'd do a little YouTube film about it. So, as you know, back in winter, I created a lovely garden table using an old college drawing board from the 80s. It's 35 years old, this board. It has never warped and it was marine ply. And it was strong and sturdy and lasted forever. And in the bid to recycle and repurpose, I decided to use this board for my garden table. I did do a little pop of research on figuring out what substrate to use as an alternative. People have talked about um, cementous boards, etc. I did look into curdy board, but to get um, each board size was about 60 by um yeah 60 centimeters by 125 and i wanted a four foot square or four foot in diameter one so i wasn't going to find it unless i spent about over 100 pounds plus delivery on it um now you could say why didn't you but it was a case of figuring out how to attach the legs to the board etc and i have very little and nada experience in that one so i thought yeah i'll do what i know best it's only an experiment and i did use everything external related so the glue was external the tiles were external these are porcelain tiles the grout obviously ultra color plus is an external grout but no matter what you put onto a substrate the substrate will basically let you down if it's not the correct one. So that's a lesson for us all. And I'm taking, I'm taking the brunt of this for you all um, so that you can learn from this as well. But every cloud has a silver lining. And as experiments go, mistakes are always magic. In my opinion, mistakes are always magic. And I had a plan back in May when it started to warp that I'm going to repurpose this for my wall in the garden. I'll show you that in a minute. But I thought I'd show you how I'm going to plan out this. The wall itself is 180 centimetres by 88. I've mapped out approximately where the paisleys could go. I would obviously rearrange and rearrange. Um, I've got lovely little circular bits and shaped bits here. So this is in a spiral. I'm wondering whether it should be a nice, crazy, oval, spiral-esque, vortex, loop-esqueness. So that's the plan, really, for that. Um, and everything else is will be invention and a little bit of fun. I have got lots of these Moroccan tiles. And the reason why I'm using this is that it'll match the um, posts, the pillars, that, uh, the brick pillars that have this onto it as well. So without further ado, I will show you what the wall looks like. So here's the wall that I'll be using for my regeneration, revigorating, recycled and repurposed wool. So it's 180 centimetres by 88 centimetres. And as you know, I'm going to be working on fibreglass mesh and external tiles and crockery. And I'm also going to be using these um, Moroccan tiles uh, within the shape and the body of the new mosaic. Um, so, as you know, it was a table. So now I've got a new table, which I got for only £20 at Facebook Marketplace. So 
all good things come to those who wait so I'm really pleased with that and it's nice smoked glass very 70s smoked glass and I might do a glass on glass mosaic on it in the future but at the moment I'm quite happy as it is okay then see you soon bye giving you a sneaky peek on what the plan of action is today. This is the kind of thing I love doing. I suppose this is my mosaic mine at, it, at its extreme. So what I've done is I've made some rubbings using a uh, newsprint and graphite stick, rub them so that each tessera is mapped out and then for example, with that section there, I have placed it down where approximately I'd like it at the moment. And then that way, I'll know exactly where the tiles are going to be. And then I can rearrange, I can add things, I can add extra lines if I want to. There's certainly all this space here to play with now. Um, and I can extend the mosaic perhaps. There's going to be a lot of fun. So once I've done all the essential bits, I can then start taking away all the central pieces and then add them on. But it's the kind of thing I love doing. It suits my mosaic crazy mind. So that's what I'll be doing today. So Watch this space and hope you enjoy following this course of action. Okay then, bye. I'm loving this. I've just rearranged the two paisley shapes, the two mango shapes, um, and figure out where I should put it. At first I was thinking, yes, high up would be good so that you can see most of the pattern and then perhaps a little bit lower down here. And then I thought, hang on, we've got these blue... Um, tessera that make that spiral maybe they should be the guidelines so I've just marked out in red where those blues would be and I've linked the two so that I've got a flowing line and then the rest of it then will dictate how it should flow from these two and then I will start playing around with these purples and I'm not taking these I'm not taking these off until I know where these are. So I'm very excited at this little piece of information that I've given myself, some little bit of genius. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, universe, for doing this for me. Okay, onward and upward. So it's Wednesday, the 11th of November, 2020, day, beginning of day three of my rejuvenation, restoration and regeneration project. And it's working out really well. The pieces are coming off the table, chipping them away really well as well. There's not a lot of crackage and brokenness. But thankfully, I've got some porcelain tiles to replenish anyway. Um, as it's the edge of the table, like so, you see, um, I'll have to add an embellish around here. But that's all right. I could make decisions about what 
color edging I'm going to use, maybe some more sparklies, um, you know, a bit of height. Now these have washed out in the in the uh, weather, in the rain and the sunlight, but I have got some more and they won't do that so much. I put them on glass. They won't do that so much if I uh, put them on a vertical against the wall. So I've got some um, patavere or, you know, sort of uh, resin type mosaic tiles and I'm going to add them to these to give it a bit of height so it'll equal so it'll equal the height of the tiles so more flat than actually indented and I've got these as well obviously I've got some gold ones and I've got some pink ones so I'm all ready to roll to figure out what the next plan of action is I'm just going to chip away this these cracked a bit last night and I think maybe it's because I was tired but um, you know because there's quite a lot of moisture in this table it's coming away quite nicely and I'm scraping the backs of these these tiles because they've got that blob of glue and they're cleaning up very nicely actually they're nice and flat here so yeah so that's the plan so far what I'm just going to do is take off the oranges the two kinds of oranges put them down and then figure out where these purples are going to go and map those out as well so it's working out really well who knows how long it'll take but I'm really enjoying it as it is Okay, speak to you soon. Bye. Well, it's a case of tap, tap, crack, crack, <laughs> chisel, chisel. So what I'm doing at the moment is very carefully chiseling out the pieces so that I can then put them into the area on the mosaic panel. Just like skirt through that bit there. There you go, that's the panel. Let me just give you a little close-up of what I'm doing. Let's see. Let's just do a little bit of tapping for you. You can see what I'm doing. It's just being very careful in chiselling out. Like so, you see. It's proper excavation. And let me take you over to the other section. Here's the other section. It's just trying to remember where things go. So they'll fit in there along with the other bits and pieces in the other section there, you see. So, um, yeah, so this is what it looks like so far. And I'm really happy with how it's going. Obviously it would have been, I would have been happier if it was, stay, it stayed as a table, but that's the way life is. And we all make mistakes, do we not? We all make mistakes. So actually this has given it a new lease of life so that I can now feather them out, what kind of deliciousness I can add to it. And in fact, I found this gorgeous bit of these coasters that I've, I've got. And I was thinking, yeah, these can go very nicely 
in certain sections of the mosaic so I'm going to figure out once I've got all the purples and the lavender colours and the oranges together and then figure out what needs to be done I've got some glass pieces there in the distance can you see so that's going to be embedded in as well some iridescence so it'll it'll bring in a new lease of life to it all so there you go So it's Saturday the 14th of November 2020 and I thought I'd give you uh, a roundup of the week's progress so far which I'm really really pleased with and how it's worked out since Monday. So this is what the table looks like now with the two mango shapes taken out. I've kept this glued on uh, and I will make my de decisions on these pieces on the on the mosaic wall section soon enough. But I thought I'd leave them as they are. They stick down. They stay where they are that way. So on with the rectangular wall piece. I haven't named it. I can't think of a name for it. I don't suppose you've got a name for it. Um, I've just called it from table to wall mosaic. Um, yeah, so that section was part of the circular table and I've extended it and added and embellished with some gorgeous glass pieces here. And this, this is my drawing line really. What was originally the spiral on the mosaic table, as you can see a little hint of that, there was a proper spiral there. And now it's become a wave, a nice, beautiful wave. So I might actually work on that wave idea and create a wave here or actually think about making two spirals. So that's all in the thinking. That's still pondering, still pondering on that. I've added and embellished in certain areas like here, you see. And I've used some beautiful tile and with my sparkly, scored and snapped it so I've got a bit of height. So I've stuck them together so I've got a bit of height so it equals the height of all the other pieces. And yeah, so that's what the work looks like now. So that's the end of part one. Speak to you soon. Bye.